So all other things align, but they don't align quite as clearly as is usually being taught. The pieces that are being taught are sections. Like the, the whole group of astrology, started from Zip Dobbins, but it went to a number of people. Have. Aries, American way. Aries are like the first houses, like Mars. They all mean the same things. And go. It's like looking through a very blurry lens and saying everything's the same. But as soon as you make the planets separate from the houses, separate, distinct from the signs, and you're seeing how they're each distinct, and you're seeing it clearly, wow, you've got a really laser beam look at how the matrix of how the psyche works and the major matrix of nature of life and how we're related to it. I mean, there's probably value in each one, but if you get, by the time you look through a modern telescope, who's going to go back to a telescope 100 years ago? I have a telescope that's bought in, in the 80s, Celestron 8, nice eight inch telescope. You can see planets go, and it's got its engine to counter things. It's great, but taking photographs is a big deal. You take the lens off the photograph, you put the, take the lens off the telescope, and you put the you screw the camera into it, and you line it up so that the mirror is reflecting the image onto the lens and it has to hold it for five minutes steady or 10 minutes steady to collect enough light on the lens to make an image. That's why all the earlier photographs of the planets were all fuzzy. But now with the digital stuff, it's getting really clear work on planets. They have telescopes that you see it, click, boom, you've got the picture of it, it's on your computer. It's incredible. I mean, most pictures of stars are non-impressive, they're just points of light. It's when you get to the moon or the planets, you get to see some, some major distinctions. But the digitalization has really allowed a tremendous improvement. And so by having a really sharp, once you can do that, once you can use a digital thing and they copy the moon, get the moon really clear and stuff like this, how do you go back to an old camera? You can always turn a color photograph into black and white if you want an effect, but uh, some people still work with the black and white because they like the effect of the shades. But once you got to the color and you got that looseness, who's going back to black and white tea after seeing after black and white TV after they've seen color TV? Who's going back to TV after they got digital YouTube and videos? It's all changing. My point is that this is a really clear, lucid tool. It's really, it opens up ideas. It really shows a lot of things. It's just so healing to know and so helpful. When someone's got a complex and you're trying to solve that complex or get someone out of that depression, out of that mood, out of that suicidal edge, these things are useful to know. So you can use a chart to, how many do you use a chart? You use a chart to organize your houses and put your affairs in order so your life is in proper order. And if your life's in proper order, you can then once they're all in the right place and it's done properly, you can aspire to higher consciousness or greater enlightenment where you can find love. So you can use the chart to get it in order, or um, or you can use it to explain your God-given potential to use as much as you can to see how far you can take things, to be better at what you're doing, push off things as far as you're doing. But pushing it doesn't always bring the understanding. The two cycles are between like rising and setting. They're projective and reactive. I'd be creative with life. I'm going to use this to see what I can do. To, it's saying I can do this. I can do more and more. It's partly that. But then if it breaks down, if you have to rebuild, many times we have a death or rebirth. We have a breakdown of personality. It means all we're projecting and all we're reacting is just falls apart and we're down on our IC wondering, I don't belong anywhere, what I'm doing here. Some people get suicidal. Some people get religiously inspired. Some people, how do you reach someone when they're there feeling it's hopeless? to explain that there is a path, there's ways of doing this differently, ways of doing this, what makes a difference and making it relevant to them on their level. So it's not what you know that you have to project. The hard part for me with astrology, what I knew just lit me up. I couldn't sleep for years. I was just wide awake with these information, but I had to work hard to learn how to see what someone else is needing to hear, not what I want to say. And that work, Took a, that took experience, that took doing charts, working through it. You know, when you first do charts, you're not sure, you know the information, you know more than the other person knows and you start to work on it. And you know, I do the first five charts you do. One person might say, oh, that's great. Another couple say, that's pretty good. That's, that's interesting. Other people say, I can't relate to what you're doing at all. 
So you may have three naysayers and two, one okay and one great. Then by the time you've done 10, you might have three saying that, that two or three saying that's pretty good. And two or three others saying, oh yeah, I, I really do. And you still might have three naysayers. By the time you get up to 25 and you got some more experience, you start diminishing those odds. By the time you get to 100 charts that you've done, you've had the experience, you've learned it more and more, and you've refined this. So you have to hand it to people for what they know more. It's part of your growth too. I've had, I've only worked as an astrologer in my career for 50 years, or 49 years, 48 years. And um, I've had the privilege of meeting an awful lot of people. I probably, before computers came, I probably already did fought more than 5,000 charts and talk and discussions with people. Maybe 10, I don't, I'm, whew, too many. But it really kept refining away of what's working, what's not, what's there, what's not. And it helped me learn, and I've been teaching for almost the same amount of time. Well, I started teaching a couple of years after I started learning. So really, I started learning when I started teaching. And I kept going like this. It's a process. It's a great mystical journey to go and learn about life, see how far it goes, and to be able to come in and live at peace with it. And to feel good about it, feel okay about it. Like, there's a puzzle in this. And so, how do you feel? How secure are you in your IC? How much have you accomplished? You don't have to accomplish a lot to feel secure, but sometimes it helps. They relate to each other. But if you feel secure, how do you get that security out to help others? Or do you just hide away with it? Oh my goodness, if you have status, so you hold the power and not and just for yourself, or you make room to try and help others. Like, it's puzzles. And we get caught in different planes, different levels of this existence. But these are just useful tools. You go over this one, you're hearing it now, think about it for a while, another week or two, listen to it again, or a month or so, listen to it again, come back and see how it works. You have, you've already done the rising, the setting, the above, below, the quadrants, the intuition, the feeling, sensation, thinking, you've already done that with your worksheets. So you're already, you're already familiar with knowing how this works and that this works, so you wouldn't be at this level. Okay, now we're adding the, the eight phases from the four, and we're putting in the causal effective resultant sections for each quadrant. And that's enough to work with. I would just work with it. I wouldn't worry about the science, but just when someone is putting the science to the houses and saying it's like this, it's not Aries is like the first house. It's not like Gemini is like the third house, that's Capricorn. That's our hesitation to speak. Children are, are, should be seen but not heard. So many things you can run around the wheel. Um, I'm just trying to think I'm about done. I'm there's is there anything I can see around this. Oh, first one's done. So it's just tools that help you unveil the layers happening. There's so many layers of consciousness in astrology, in life. One level to one. And once it takes time, we experience this whole dimension, one layer, and then we grow, we learn another. And we experience so many dimensions and some layers we don't even experience. And we have this mix that's our hodgepodge. That's my take. And I work with that's real to me. And I may have blind spots in it. I'm sure I do. But what I'm using, I, I know I've evolved it. I've certainly made my life a lot better from knowing astrology than from before I knew it. I was just winging everything and judging everything, however embarrassingly looking at it now. So whenever we look back, we've always grown from where we are. If anybody has been around 60 years, they've lived through 60 years of transits. Whether they're living positively, negatively, whatever, they still did it. They still experienced it. They've accumulated that much of a matrix of experience. They're going to have their stories. They're going to have their way of expressing astrology. This is the, the rose flowering on the cross. This is the, the, the rose opening up, and like the heart opening up. As this understanding opens up, it begins to open up. Wow, this is all how spirit works. This is all our attachment to life, but then there's a spirit that can really, how much of your spirit are you putting into this? For how long will you not, or how long will you? So it's just a mandala by itself. It's just neutral, it's just a design on a piece of paper. You could pick it up, so that there's nothing, throw it away, so that it's just a design I saw on the street. But you just picked up, and you have a key to understanding the universe, or understanding the solar system, understanding nature, and it's sitting there, but you don't, 
we have to learn to un unveil the codes and the mysteries and each layer, by the time we get the constellations, there's other layers that come in, other things come in. I'm just working to secure the basic foundational levels with Rasa, the signs of the house, to understand deeply and clearly. And as we get to mystical things, we can begin to fathom how certain insights or certain meditations, certain awarenesses blossom in a person's life, how certain achievements, how certain directions get taken, and how it's all part of a spiritual process. So I think I'm done. How are we doing for time? Yeah, okay, we're right there. I think I'm done about now. So um, that's it. So we've got more to do in the houses next week. But um, that's it for today. Thanks. Okay.